so let's continue with what we were talking about the last time we spoke. Here's a long bone, and we're going to talk about the different types of bone. We're going to spend the most time on the long bone, though, because this is where we really are able to see the different parts more clearly. This centerpiece is the diaphysis. This is an epiphysis. This is an epiphysis. This stuff on the end is the articular cartilage. It provides a nice smooth surface for the bone to connect with another bone here and rub without much friction. If we didn't have the articular cartilage on the end and you did this with your arm, it would hurt. And if you did this with your arm, it would hurt. People who have damage to their articular cartilage, maybe their body's immune system has started to attack it, start to develop arthritis. They start to develop grinding in their joints. There's, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. The spongy bone here is where you find the red marrow, and it's usually towards the epiphyses. The marrow cavity contains the yellow marrow, which they've included in the diagram. The layer on the inside of this marrow cavity is called the endosteum. And then this outer layer of connective tissue going all the way around the bone, all over it, is called the periosteum. And this is where you get your blood vessels that are held on to the bone on the outside. And this is also where the nerves go. This is one of the reasons why we don't feel pain ever in our bones. There's no nerves that go into the bones. We do, however, can feel pain in the periosteum of the bone. And anytime you have bone pain, you're actually feeling pain of the periosteum, not the bone itself. Not that the bone isn't alive, not that it's not living tissue, because there are living cells in this non-living matrix, but it's the periosteum that has all the nerves. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the two types of bone. The compact bone, which we see here as much more dense, and then the spongy bone, which we see as much less dense. It's, it's actually has an appearance of a sponge. That's why we call it spongy bone. We're going to first look at the compact bone. Now, this is one little section of the marrow cavity. Let's say we took a slice right here and we just took that piece out right there. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. So let's say we took a section of bone right there and we magnified it. This is what we would see. So this is the endosteum. It has the appearance of spongy bone, just a small layer on the inside of the marrow cavity. And this is all compact bone all the way out to the periosteum right here. Now, bone grows in a circular pattern. So it actually grows around blood vessels inwardly. Grows around blood vessels inwardly. And we have names for all of these different parts, and we're going to be taking notes on all these different parts. The blood vessels usually run through compact bone in what we call central canals. So all these little openings are central canals, and they're all over this compact bone. The veins, the arteries, have little capillaries that go into these central canals, and they run all the way to the marrow. Because remember, here's where we find yellow marrow, and then towards the ends of the bone, we find red marrow. So we gotta have lots of blood vessels going into those bones to grab material and give material to that marrow. The circular layers are called osteons. And then on the outside of those um, osteons, we have these little sections, which we call lamellae. So let's take a few notes and we'll talk through each one of these. 
Here's another way of looking at the compact bone. Here's the compact bone again, a little section right here from the marrow cavity of a long bone. You can see the spongy bones here, spongy bones here, compact bone all the way down the diaphysis. Here's the opening in the compact bone, the central canal. The whole circle is known as the osteon. And then these actual layers in there are known as the lamellae. We're just gonna call them the lamellae. Here's the lamellae. They kind of have the striped appearance to them. So the circles are the osteons. The little line segments in the circles are called the lamellae. And they're very important to the uh, features of the compact bone. Now, you can see the periosteum looks a lot different, that outer connective tissue where we find the nerves, where we find the arteries and the veins. And um, it's pretty stuck to the outside of the compact bone. It's, it's really hard to even pull this thing off like they're doing here, but you could theoretically pull it off if you try it of a living bone. Okay, so here's an actual microscopic image of the compact bone. And you can see those circles we saw on the compact bone are right here. The openings are right there. And then these little striped parts are right there. So here's the lamellae. There's the striped sections. The circles are the central canals. And then the whole section of circles is known as the osteon. Here again, this stuff is called the lamellae. Here's the central canal. And then this whole thing would be known as the osteon. Now the little lines in the lamellae are known as caniculi. These words today are going to get tough, so just hang with me. So compact bone, please write that down. Here's what I want you to remember. The compact bone is found in the diaphysis. compact bone is made of these circular osteons. Notice compact bone is underlined, osteons is underlined. Now the osteons are the circular sections of the compact bone. They are made up of thin rings of bone, which we call the lamellae. The lamellae are the things we find inside those circles, those rings inside the circle. Notice that lamellae is underlined. Now there are living cells inside the non-living matrix of bone. And those living cells are called osteocytes. And these bone cells live inside certain sections called lacuna.
you can't really see where the lacuna is on this image, but if you look at the lamellae, in between each ring, there's a darker portion. That's where we find the lacuna, and that's where we find the osteocytes. So this darker section around each one of these lamellae inside the osteon has living cells, osteocytes. And those osteocytes produce the hard mineral composition, the non-living matrix of the bone that gives it its rigidity, mostly calcium, phosphorus, a little bit of magnesium. And now all of that surrounds these openings, which we call the central canals. And these openings, these canals contain blood vessels. And those blood vessels are there to nourish the living cells in the bone, the osteocytes. Remember, all living cells need nutrients from the food we eat, oxygen from the air we breathe. They need a way to get rid of carbon dioxide waste products and other chemical waste products. And so it's through these blood vessels that that happens. And there's these little canals that connect the osteocytes to the blood vessels. And they're the lines that you see in the lamellae. We call these little lines the caniculi. It's kind of a funky name. Canel, can, think of ca canal, iculi, caniculi. Now it's through the osteocytes that are constantly making more matrix when needed that they create the lamellae which circle the central canals in this whole unit which we call an osteon. And then it repeats. And so as this bone grew, It started as one layer of lamellae around the central canal. And then as it needed to get bigger, another layer of lamellae was created with the help of osteocytes on the inside. And then it pushed those other layers out. And then another layer formed on the inside. And it will keep doing that until it gets the message it doesn't need to get any bigger. Whatever that message is. When you can see the layers of the lamellae up here, you can see the little lines are the caniculi, the, can the canals that allow nourishment in between these rings where we find the osteocytes. Remember the osteocytes are in the lacuna, which is the darker portion of those rings. And that whole thing is known as an osteon. That's the unit of bone is the osteon. Now this is just compact bone. Compact bone, really tough, it's very rigid. Think of almost like steel. It bends a little bit, has a little bit of give, but it's not quite as flexible as spongy bone, which we find on the ends of the long bone. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about spongy bone next. And you'll see it has some of, some of the same features as compact bone, but a lot more space. Okay. 
Okay, if you miss any of the notes here, guys, they're already in the slides, so I'm going to keep moving on. Just leave some space so that you can go back and fill them in later. Here is an epiphysis. This is probably the thigh bone, the femur. It looks big enough to be the femur. You can see all of the spongy material here. There's no red marrow left in here. It's all dried out. So this was probably cut and sectioned, then left to dry. All the red marrow dried out of there. And all you're left with is the, the non-living matrix that was um, basically built to hold all that red marrow, which we call the spongy bone. Now you can see here the compact bone of the diaphysis is much, much, much denser than the spongy bone is. You can see through the spongy bone if you, if you make a, a thin enough cut. Compact bone, doesn't matter how thin you go, you can't really see through it. It's pretty, pretty dense. So this creates some rigidity on the long parts of our bone. So they don't just snap easily. But then if our bones were made only of compact bone, our bones would be way too heavy to carry around we would require lots of stronger muscles just to walk, never mind run or do anything with these bones. If you've ever seen um, the bones of a bird, the bones of a bird are, are quite hollow. They're pretty much all spongy bone. Now that creates a very light skeleton. And if you need to fly, you wanna be as light as you can. So they've adapted a much lighter version of the skeleton we have. Our bones are much too heavy. We would never be able to sustain ourselves in flight, even if we had wings. We're just simply too heavy. But we do have an advantage of some lighter bone material because of spongy bone. So let's talk about that real quick. Spongy bone is made of the, um, you can close it if you want, Mr. Leon, if you see, if you see that. The spongy bone is made of the same sections of compact bone, those osteons. It has the lamellae, it has those canals, the caniculi, and it has osteocytes. It just has them much more spread out than compact bone does. Again, here's the lacuna with the osteocyte. Here's the lamellae. Here's the caniculi osteocyte. We'll talk about osteoclasts a little bit later and these osteoblasts. This has to do with the storage of minerals, building up bone, breaking it down. But this allows these web-like appearance, which we call the, the actual pieces of the sponge we call trabeculi. So spongy bone. Spongy bone is found in the epiphysis, either one of the epiphyses. And it's made of sections of bone called trabeculi. The spaces surrounding the trabeculi are open so they're filled with red marrow. And you can see a section of spongy bone right here. You can see how spongy the appearance is and how brittle those trabeculi really are. Now, if this was um, directly out of a fresh body, it would, have, it would be filled with red marrow. Here, the red marrow is all dried out. It's no longer there. There are no central canals in spongy bone. So the blood basically just floods through the spongy bone in the marrow itself. That's actually what gives the marrow its red color because it's making red blood cells, tons of red blood cells, and it's also releasing tons of red blood cells as the blood passes through it. It's making some white blood cells, but not nearly as many red blood cells. So the red marrow appears red for all those red blood cells that are in there. The spongy bone itself is much lighter than the compact bone. 
but it's still incredibly strong. And it has to do a little bit with physics. Anytime you have an angle against another angle, it's much stronger than if you just had something like this. This is a much stronger structure when you're pushing like this than like this. And the body found that advantage and used it to create a very strong structure in the spongy bone. 